Here's a second method to explain polyhedra to our flat friend. Start by inflating a polyhedron so that the vertices and the edges are on the surface of a sphere. Then we stereographically project onto the plane of the lizards so that our two-dimensional friends may enjoy the spectacle. Of course, we can spin the sphere around, and with it, our tetrahedron, just as we did before with the Earth. Let's take a look at the cube and see how many vertices, edges, and faces it has. And now, here comes an octahedron. You see the eight colored faces? Look how the projections of the edges are arcs of circles. Now here comes an icosahedron. Its structure is more complicated, but it's not hard to understand, even for the lizards. One can see 20 faces, 12 vertices, and 30 edges. Can you count them all? Finally, here's a little geometric jewel, the dodecahedron. Now for some exercises. Let's take ourselves down into two dimensions and try to recognize the polyhedra from their stereographic projection. It's easy, isn't it? You can see the four faces, six edges, and four vertices. There, it's a tetrahedron. Now, what's this one? Six faces, each with four edges. That's right, it's a cube.
That was harder, wasn't it? The faces are triangles. Five edges start out at each vertex. There are a lot of faces, perhaps 20. It's an icosahedron. Well done. Let's look at the dodecahedron. Each face is a pentagon. If we count them, there are 12 faces. Three edges start at each vertex. These five solids have always fascinated geometers. The Greek philosophers attributed a magical importance to them by associating one of the fundamental elements from which the world is formed to each of them. We call these figures the Platonic solids. So we agree then. It's not easy to get a feeling for the third dimension when you are flat. There is more than one way to do this, but our stereographic projection gives a good idea of what's going on. Now, let's get ready for the fourth dimension. Prepare your imagination for a workout.